response? What's the... You see, even not responding is a behavior. If I'm talking to you and you don't respond, you keep quiet, that's a behavior. I even may get even more upset because you're not replying to me. See, behaviors can be verbal and non-verbal. So far we have learned to identify and understand behavior as something verbal. Somebody, something the person does. But frankly speaking, if you feel quiet, I spend a lot of time with the mystic teachers and yogis and Zen masters and Sufis, and a lot of time they are very quiet. And then really upsets you because you ask something and they are quiet. And sometimes they would say that, okay, try to find the answer, not in my words, but in my silence. <laughs> Now, the history of NLP. Early 70s, two people, one was Dr. John Greinler, a PhD in uh, linguistics, and one was Dr. Richard Bendler, a psychotherapist. Both got together and studied some of the most amazing individuals available to them at that time in the United States. They found that these individuals that they were studying produced amazing results. They may not have had so many education, they did not have enough resources yet, they are able to produce amazing results. Okay. They search in areas of therapy, education, science, uh, business, major corporations. They realized that there were people who were producing results unimaginable. I mean, think of the guy who developed Google, think of the guy who made Microsoft. People, amazing results. Half of the top entrepreneurs of the world were college dropouts. Do you know that? 50% of them who have reached to the top, they were college dropouts, which means it was not education that was required to reach to the top, it was something else. So they studied them. And one of the things that they found out that those people were able to use their brain in a very different way, which normal people do not do. They collected these skills, the way they were using their brains, and formed into what was called NLP. So in NLP, what you basically learn is to model the strategy of a very successful person and be like him. It's like copy and paste, not cut and paste. You understand what makes a person an excellent communicator. You understand what makes a person a great chef. You understand what makes a doctor a great therapist. And one of the greatest uh, psychotherapists was Dr. Milton Erickson. And he was, he's known as the father of uh, modern hypnosis. A person who got polio at the age of seven, spent all his life in a wheelchair. A lot of pain. And in order to cope with this pain, he started thinking differently. And because he had to cope up with that pain, he developed strategy by which he could help people. And he could make, he could talk to you and he, in five, ten minutes he would make you forget your name. You wouldn't even know what's your name. It's such an amazing ability. So Richard Pender was one of the associates working with Dr. Richard, uh, Dr. Milton Erickson. And he learned that Milton Erickson had a unique way of talking to people during therapy. In fact, one of his uh, great stories about Milton Erickson was that the... Uh, Association of Psychologists in the United States complained to the board that Milton Erickson was using hypnosis. Now in the early, till 60s, hypnosis was banned, legally banned. You could not use hypnosis in therapy, it was banned in the United States. So the report went to the president of the board and the president called a meeting and Milton Erickson was asked to come and sort of, you know, give his word, views as to why was he using hypnosis and whether he was using hypnosis or not. Milton Erickson never lied in his life. That's one of the things, great things about these Goras. They normally are very truthful people. Okay. So Milton Erickson went in, on his wheelchair. The board was there. They asked him a couple of questions. He replied to them very honestly. The next day, uh, one therapist who was really jealous of Milton Erickson went to the board and asked him as to have they cancelled Milton Erickson's license or not. They said, what license? He said, well, did he come yesterday? He is using hypnosis. So what did you guys do with him? Did you, did you reach a verdict? Did you cancel his license? He said, well, he came to us, he talked to us, and then what happened? We don't know. <laughs> they had all completely forgotten what was talked in the room. Okay? And this was one of the things that Richard Bandler learned from Milton Erickson as to what kind of a language he was using. 
Milton Erickson never made people close their eyes. He would just talk to them. And in this conversation, he used a lot of linguistic models. And in that, he could turn your head in such a way that in a couple of sessions, your problem was solved and you never knew if you ever had a problem. Now, when we talk of possibilities uh, beyond current limitation, we are talking about different forms of competition. There is competition in your office, there is competition in your business, there is competition in the road. There is competition everywhere in your life. For example, your competition at home. Your kids, they compete, they need to be better uh, in schools, they need to have better grades. So life is full of competition all the time. Till you die, in order to live a life worth living, you need to compete at every level whether it is professional or personal level. Next. Now, we are talking about how does NLP work. First and foremost, to most of you, this may come as a shock. In communication, and when I am talking about communication right now, I am talking about verbal communication. In verbal communication, we prepare a great speech, we prepare a great presentation. That only is 7% of the total communication. Only 7%. Okay. That's why I am, I usually don't give a presentation like this. I never use a multimedia. I don't use anything. I just talk to people, eye to eye contact and I talk. But in corporate culture, I don't know why, where has this come from? You need a multimedia. If there's no multimedia, the presentation is not effective. So I'm using the multimedia. 7%, whatever I am showing you right now or talking to you 